This video is brought to you by Sayerite. In this video, we'll show you how to sew up your own market tote bag. This is an easy to sew project that will result in a great open top tote bag that you can use anywhere. Pick your favorite fabric at the Sayerite website and follow along with us as we show you how to do it yourself. To begin our project, we need to mark our fabric to the correct size panels. We will be creating four rectangles which will measure as follows. You can see we are using a 54 inch fabric from Sayerite and we only need 27 inches of fabric to create one bag. Nest the panels as shown here and your fabric's pattern, if it has a pattern, will usually be orientated correctly. We will cut out our fabric with scissors since our fabric choice has a high cotton content. We can't use a hot knife to cut the fabric as it will tend to burn. So we will have to contend with edges that tend to unravel. You could use pinking shears, or if you're using a synthetic fabric, use the hot knife. Now all four panels are cut out. We will first fabricate the tote bag handles. At Sayerite, we prefer to use double-sided tape or seam stick to baste hems and seams together prior to sewing. It helps to hold the fabric in place as you take it to the sewing machine and sew. If you don't use seam stick, you could iron the fabric to create a good crease for the hem here. Our first hem will be about a quarter inch along the long side of the 4 by 36 inch fabric panel. As you can see, the seam stick holds the hem in place perfectly. Our second hem will be about one and a quarter inches along the opposite long side of the panel, making the overall width of the handle two and a half inches. We will use a yardstick on the table below our handle as we base this hem down to help ensure that our overall width is correct. We did use a pencil on the yardstick to help us quickly identify our measurements. Follow that same procedure for both the handle panels. If you do not have seam stick, you could use an iron to crease the hems. After the two handles are hemmed, check to ensure they are about the same width by laying one over the other. If they are majorly off, make modifications. Next, we will fold the handles in half so the hems are on the inside, and we will sew a straight stitch along the two outer edges of the handle to secure the hems and the handle in half. We're using the Sayerite Alterfeed LSZ Basic Sewing Machine to sew this tote bag together. Our stitch length is set at about four to five millimeters. We are using a number 16 size needle and V69 sewing thread. All of the tools and materials that we are using for this tote bag are available at Sayerite. Notice that as we sew this handle edge, we are carefully lining up the folded edges of the handle and sewing only a few inches and then realigning the edges and sewing again. Take your time to ensure that the handle edges are even or if you like, you could use seam stick and baste the handle in half prior to sewing. Remember that when you start sewing and end your stitches, you should do some reversing to lock the stitch in place. Here we are sewing the opposite side of the handle. Follow that same procedure for both handles. Here's what they look like when you are done. Next up, we'll hem the bag's main body panel. Our fabric has a right side and a wrong side, so we need to be sure that we are creating our hems on the correct side. We will next take the main body panel and create a one inch double hem on both short edges. To do this, we will place a seam stick on the wrong side of the fabric along the short edges. Then we will fold the fabric to create about a one inch hem. After that hem is complete, we will place seam stick over the top edge of the first hem that we just created, then fold it over again to complete the one inch double hem. I like to rip the seam stick as shown in the video by hand but some of our customers prefer to cut the seam stick to the appropriate length. I find that when you rip or break the seam stick, it makes it easier to peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. Another advantage to seam stick is the fact that you can make modifications if needed by peeling up the fabric and rebasting. Here you can see the hem is one inch. Follow that same procedure for the opposite short side of the main body panel. We'll not be showing this. Now sew both double hems with the row of straight stitches about an eighth inch away from the outer edge and the inner folded edge of the hem. Be sure to do some reversing at the beginning and also at the end of your sewing to lock the stitch in place.
In the next section, we'll attach the handles to this portion of the bag. Now find your handles and place seam stick along the ends of the handle on the same side, not more than 10 inches up from the bottom. We've done it here, now we need to do it to the opposite end, but the same side. Peel off the transfer paper and then baste the handle to the main body bag 5.5 inches from the sides and 10.5 inches down from the top edge. Be sure you are basting the handle on the correct side of the fabric panel. Notice that the hems are facing down. We are using a clear acrylic ruler so we can easily measure from the side and the top at the same time. If you don't have one of these rulers and you plan on sewing a few projects like this, we highly recommend them. You can purchase them at Sailrite. The ruler also makes it easy to ensure that the handle is being basted down straight. We will keep the hemmed edge of the handle facing the inside of the U to keep the handle's orientation the same. Do the same procedure for the opposite side. Once the handles are basted down, we can sew them in place on the main body. Try to sew so the stitches fall on top of the stitches you sewed on the handle when making it initially. Sew to the top of the bag, stopping at the first stitch that secured the hem. Then we'll sew across the handle following the same stitch under the handle. To do this, bury the needle by hand, lift the presser foot, and rotate the fabric around completing a 90 degree turn. Then sew to the next stitch and follow that same procedure again. If you notice that you're not close enough or too far, you can rotate the balance wheel by hand while using the reverse lever until the needle falls at the desired location. Each bag has two handles and four legs. Secure each of the four legs as shown here. Now we will work with the bag bottom panel, which is 13 inches by 19 inches. We will apply seam stick to the long edges with the wrong side of the fabric facing up, and then we'll create a quarter inch hem along those two long edges of this panel. Once the quarter inch hem is finished, we will place seam stick on top of those hems yet again. Now we will base the bag bottom panel to the main body panel on the correct side, of course. If your measurements are correct, the bottom panel should cover the ends of the handle. This goes right along the edge, covering the handle. Be sure to center the bottom panel. To do this, ensure that the panel covers the same amount of handle end on both sides. Also make sure the panel is straight as you baste it in place. You can measure from the ends if you like, or sometimes you can use the pattern of the fabric if your fabric has a pattern. Take the assembly to the sewing machine and sew a straight stitch about an eighth inch from the edge of the bottom panel, sewing it to the main body. As always, when you have fabric that does not pass under the arm of the sewing machine, simply scroll up the excess fabric, making it pass easily under the arm. After that stitch is done, make another stitch about a quarter inch away from the first stitch. After this is done, we will concentrate on creating a rectangular bottom for the bag, giving the bag the ability to stand up for easy use. To do this, we will create a large pleat. Find the center of the bag along the sides and mark it with a pencil. Now measure over four inches from that center mark and place a pin. Do that also on the opposite end of the center mark. So you have a pin that is eight inches away from each other. Do that on both sides of the bag assembly. 
These pins will be used for reference only. They do not hold panels together, so don't worry about pinning them through both layers. Fold the bag assembly so the wrong sides face each other. Fold the top portion of the bag down to create a crease at the pin location. Increase the fabric at that point, all the way across to the other pin. Then hold the bag assembly at the pin location and lift the bag so you can create that same fold at the pin location on the opposite side. Line up the top edges and ensure that the bottom folds are even. If not, you can often make adjustments to the folds without having to re-sew. Bottom looks nice. Confirm that everything matches up. Line up the top of the bag and pin that edge so the tops are even. Place the pin about one to two inches away from the edge so you can still sew the raw edge with the pin left in place. So that's lined up. And we're going to do the same thing here. Here you want to be sure to pin both the top layer and the bottom layer of the bag. Then we can pull these pins. Once you're happy, pull the four pins that were used for reference at the bottom and insert a pin to hold the fold or pleat in place. Again, you must push the pin through the top and bottom layers of fabric. That pin is positioned around two inches from the raw edge. That way we don't have to move it when we take it to the sewing machine and sew. Only one more step and your tote bag is complete. Let's sew up the sides of the bag. Start sewing from the top edge of the bag and sew a straight stitch about a quarter inch away from the raw edge, catching all layers of the bag and the pleat below. We've chosen a rather heavy fabric, 12.2 ounces, to make this tote bag. So at this point, when we have to sew the hems and the pleat area, we have quite a lot of bulk at those locations. Without a heavy duty machine like the Sayerite Ultra Feed, you may find those areas hard to sew. However, if you pick a fabric that is not as heavy, you should not have any difficulty with a home sewing machine. Now because we could not use a hot knife to cut the fabric since it's cotton, we have a lot of unraveling of the fabric along this raw edge. You can do one of three things here. You can sew a tight zigzag stitch as we are doing here, or you can use a serger sewing machine to keep the edges from unraveling. Or finally, you can sew on a light binding tape. It's your choice. Even with a tight zigzag stitch along this edge, we still have some unraveling, but it will never go past the zigzag stitch we just created. Now simply cut away any loose threads, and you can even trim up the raw edges which will be on the inside of the bag, but be sure not to cut into your zigzag stitches if you use that option to help keep the edges from unraveling. Turn the bag right side out, and you are done. A materials list is coming up next. You can build one bag with just 27 inches of a 54 inch wide fabric. So with just three yards of fabric, you can make four of these bags. Here's the materials list and the tools that were used to build this tote bag. You can find hundreds of fabric choices from Sailrite. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sailrite website or subscribe to the Sailrite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.